back. And who's going to take it this afternoon? It's lights out and away we go. They have shared a brilliant championship battle. Formula One is the world's fastest sport. The cars weigh nearly 2,000 pounds and reach top speeds of more than 200 miles per hour. Drivers are paid up to $40 million annually and experience nearly the same G-force as an astronaut during takeoff. Teams like Ferrari, Mercedes, and Red Bull employ thousands of people and spend $145 million annually to build the fastest car. The exciting nature of Formula One makes it one of the world's most popular sports. Hundreds of thousands of people show up to each race and another 70 million watch from the comfort of their home. That's Super Bowl level viewership, but it's every single weekend, not just once a year. The drivers have become legitimate celebrities with millions of fans. Sir Lewis Hamilton. And races are held all over the world. Saudi Arabia, Singapore, Abu Dhabi. But this also makes Formula One a logistical nightmare. The 2023 calendar includes 24 races across 21 countries on five different continents in just nine months. Races will be held in 10 different time zones and drivers will spend 240 hours or 10 full days on flights. Teams will transport 1,500 tons of equipment and they'll travel more than 75,000 miles in total enough distance to cover the entire circumference of the Earth three times. They'll use a combination of trucks, boats, and planes to move cars, engines, and computers. And everything will be planned out 18 months in advance so that there are no mistakes. But how exactly do they do it? How much does it cost? And what happens if they make a mistake? Here's everything you need to know about the incredible logistics behind Formula One. First, it's important to understand how Formula One works geographically. All 10 Formula One teams have their own headquarters. This is a physical building that is commonly referred to as a factory. It's where the cars are designed, developed, and manufactured. Most have a wind tunnel for testing and a simulator to help drivers prepare for each race. Hundreds of employees work in these buildings year round, and it's where you'll find everyone during the week, from sales and marketing teams to engineers and the drivers themselves. But these factories aren't all located in the same place. Mercedes, Red Bull, McLaren, Aston Martin, Alpine, and Williams are in the UK. Ferrari, Haas, and AlphaTauri are in Italy and Alfa Romeo is located in Switzerland. This requires each team to come up with its own custom logistics plan. They'll start working with F1's logistical partner, DHL, up to 18 months before each race. DHL has been working with Formula One for nearly 40 years, and they have a team of 35 dedicated specialists that travel to every race to oversee transport, setup, breakdown, and packing. But the simplest way to explain Formula One logistics is by breaking the season-long calendar into two parts, European races and flyaway races. European races are pretty self-explanatory. They are races that take place in Europe, like Zandvoort, Silverstone, Monaco, Monza, and Spa. These races are much easier and cheaper logistically because everything is transported by trucks rather than planes and boats. The transportation trucks include refrigerators, exercise equipment, TVs, food, and beds. And they literally carry everything from chairs and tables to engines, computers, and cars. Teams arrive about a week before the circuit is open to ticket holders and 27 trucks are unloaded over the course of five days to make sure the entire paddock is finished by Wednesday. And since trucking is so much cheaper than planes, teams will transport entire buildings to construct at European races. These structures are called motorhomes. They serve as temporary headquarters at each race and have everything that is needed to manage and feed entire Formula One teams. Take Red Bull Racing, for example. Their motorhome is three stories and more than 13,000 square feet. It has offices, an outdoor deck, a private chef, and an espresso bar. It takes 25 crew members 32 hours to assemble it, but just one day to take it down. And when it comes time for Monaco, Red Bull doesn't mess around. They take the 13,000 square foot motorhome apart, transport it to Imperia on the Italian Riviera, spend 32 hours reassembling it on a barge, and tow it 20 nautical miles down the Mediterranean coast. It then floats in the Monaco Harbor all week, and the pool frequently gets used after victories. But the toughest part of the European Formula One calendar is back-to-back -back races. These are races that take place in two consecutive weekends, and transportation crews are given just three full days to break down, travel, and rebuild their base at the next race location. Let's use this year's Hungarian Grand Prix and Belgian Grand Prix as an example. These two races will be held just seven days apart, and the schedule will look something like this. The Hungarian Grand Prix will wrap up around 5 p.m. local time on Sunday, July 23rd. Crews will immediately start packing things up while the FIA, F1's governing body, completes their post-race inspection. The teams will work all through the night and eventually finish packing around 6 a.m. the next morning. And that's when each team's truck drivers head out. Teams usually place two to three drivers in each truck and they take shifts driving so that they only have to stop for gas. The drive covers about 1,300 kilometers and takes 12 hours. So they'll arrive at some point on Monday night if everything goes as planned. The remaining 50 plus crew members 
We'll meet them at the track and immediately start unloading. They'll have to rebuild everything exactly how it was, and they only have two days to do it. This means members of the logistics crew often work 15 hour shifts and team chefs feed them with minimal setup to ensure they're fueled and can keep working. And it's not like this happens just once a year. There are seven back-to-back -back races in 2023 alone. In total, teams will cover about 15,000 miles over five months during the European season. And transportation crews will spend about two months on the road, physically away from home. But that's the easy part of the Formula One season, at least logistically. Because while road transport can be difficult, flyaway races are a whole different logistical beast. The 2023 season includes races in Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Australia, Miami, Canada, Mexico, Qatar, Brazil, Las Vegas, and Abu Dhabi. And teams will start planning for these races months in advance. For example, three months before the Formula One season even starts, all 10 race teams pack five kits of shipping container. Wealthy teams like Red Bull, Mercedes, and Ferrari might use more containers, but a typical kit includes three 40-foot shipping containers. These shipping containers are packed with all non-critical equipment for race weekend, including jacks, trolley, chair, table, kitchen equipment, and more and they travel by boat in a leapfrog pattern from each flyaway race destination to the next. So after each race is finished, the kit is repacked and shipped to the next flyaway race that doesn't currently have a kit. Let's use the 2023 season as an example. Teams will ship the first few kits to Bahrain, Australia, Azerbaijan, and Miami. The Bahrain kit will then move to Saudi Arabia, Singapore, and Brazil throughout the season. The Australia kit will go to Japan. The Azerbaijan kit will be seen in Qatar and Abu Dhabi and the Miami kit will be responsible for races in Canada, Austin, Mexico, and Las Vegas. These kits will then go back to the team's home base for the winter after the season is over. This five kit approach provides teams with a bit more leeway when it comes to time, and they save a ton of money by shipping the containers on boats rather than airplanes. But the toughest part of the Formula One season is undoubtedly back-to-back -back flyaway races. These are two races on back-to-back -back weekends that are often hundreds of miles apart. Take Las Vegas and Abu Dhabi. These races are just one week apart, but teams will be required to travel more than 8,200 miles. They'll be on a plane for nearly 20 hours, and they'll have to deal with an 11 hour time difference when they arrive. The schedule might look something like this. The Las Vegas Grand Prix is on a Saturday night, so pack up will begin during the race. Teams will start by loading up spare parts that can't be used once the race has started, like additional engines. And the rest of the pack up begins just 15 minutes after the race ends. The most important items are loaded onto priority pallets and then driven directly to the airport just hours after the race. Pallets from all 10 teams are then loaded onto five Boeing 777s for an early flight on Sunday morning. These planes are chartered by Formula One, but each team pays for the space that they use. The rest of the pallets are then loaded onto additional airplanes within four to six hours, and each team's staff starts their travel the day after the race. Lower level staff fly on commercial flights, while high profile drivers often fly private. The cargo planes will land in Abu Dhabi on Monday, and after going through customs, they'll be driven to the racetrack for the assembly crew to start setting everything up. But there is one important stipulation. No team is allowed to touch their freight until every team's freight arrives. This is done to ensure that no team gets a head start and everyone ends up on an equal playing field. The assembly crews will then have less than 48 hours to set everything up before drivers and team principals start to arrive. This process starts with basic things, like installing custom wall paneling in the garage, but it ends with complex tasks, like setting up an electrical system for radio and computer equipment. And these races are equally as difficult for the driver, albeit in a slightly different way. Because there are so many time zone changes that teams deal with, especially with back-to-back -back races, Formula One drivers are constantly fighting jet lag. Faith Fisher Attack, the physio for Haas, told the New York Times that there is a clear correlation between jet lag and then having poor performance. And if you equate that to what they have to do in the car, there's a clear consequence. So drivers work with their trainers in a number of different ways to combat this jet lag. Most of them try to arrive several days early to a race destination when time permits. Rupert Man Warning, the physio for Ferrari driver Carlos Sainz, told the New York Times that there is no firm rule for shifting to a new time zone. But the simple rule is that for every hour difference, you need a day to adapt. If it is a nine hour time difference, we'll try and arrive that number of days in advance. But that can be a challenge over the course of a season, as being at home is important outside of races. We are dealing with humans, not robots. Drivers will also try to limit light exposure so that their bodies can adapt quicker. And they often try to get in a light workout upon waking up or before bed. <laughs> Ultimately, the Formula One season is a grind, both mentally and physically. The season runs for nine out of the 12 months in a single calendar year, and employees often spend weeks away from their families at a time. Each team spends thousands of hours and millions of dollars each year on logistics, and the difference between winning and losing can come down to just milliseconds. But I guess that's all part of the reason why Formula One is one of the world's most popular sports.